peppercorn. Just pepper that's not ground. Raw. From the bean pod. It spices food. It's an easily attainable commodity, like all of these things in the United States and almost everywhere else at this point. Uh, coffee. Grounds. Non-distinct. No particular brand. Uh, also easily attainable throughout the world. Um, something that we have become quite addicted to coffee, uh, but nonetheless it's still a, a dispensable commodity. Then, of course, we have salt, something that's been taxed and something that's been used for many thousands of years uh, to salt foods, um, to add that, that, that extra sodium flavor, I guess you could say. And sugar comes from the cane, makes things sweet, helps you make candy. Um, also easily dispensable. Now, throughout human history, it seems that these commodities have been less dispensable than human lives. I'm talking, of course, about slavery. Now, in Haiti, for instance, sugar is, uh, has a terrible history. Um, I believe it was the Spaniards that first uh, grew sugar there and worked the natives to death and then imported African slaves to harvest the sugar cane. And then the French came and the French did the same thing. And eventually, um, through a combination of, um, you know, everybody kind of mixing and um, I guess you could say interbreeding or inter intermixing in that way, um, plus the, the fact that the French were very cruel and the, the African slaves had a very large majority uh, a revolution happened. Um, something like tea as well. You know, we all have heard of the Boston Tea Party in the United States. And um, because of the tea tax that Britain wanted to impose upon us, uh, the, that the Tea Party happened. You know, the, the Patriots went on that ship and dumped all the tea into uh, to the ocean. Um, not especially gruesome compared to some of these other commodities, uh, especially when you consider that spice has the most gruesome history out of all of these things. Uh, spice being pepper in this case. Uh, people have killed and enslaved each other over pepper, I think far longer than any of these other commodities. Um, but the more we study history, the more we look at how all of these things have been gained through slave labor for many centuries, uh, just because it was so damn convenient. And even in ancient Greece, uh, slavery was, was a huge thing. And, you know, thousand BC, I think is as far as we can, you know, trace slavery back in, in Greece, maybe, maybe seven, eight hundred BC, uh, as far as records go, as far as things we can prove, um, even Sparta, Sparta had a very small number of citizens, but had this vast population of helots that were slaves that did most of the manual labor, uh, while the Spartans got all the glory. Uh, and of course, in the United States, whether it be cotton, coffee, um, tobacco, especially tobacco in the South. It's very famous for, um, you know, the South is very fam famous for its tobacco plantations. Um, people were tortured and killed if they didn't perform their duties for tobacco, something that is easily dispensable, something that none of us even need. Um, I think that looking at history has made me very pessimistic in one regard. Um, we seem to justify our own claims of ownership over another person or, or our right to be in a particular position, uh, whether it be economic, societal, or what have you, um, if, it's, if it's convenient. Um, it seems that the logic and compassion of many people purely turn upon convenience, like these commodities are now convenient for us in the modern times. Uh, but... I think that all of those people who were enslaved to harvest these commodities, these easily dispensable commodities, they don't have to have lived and died in vain. The only way we're going to stop something like this from continuing is to learn our history. And now you say, okay, well in the United States now, in Western countries, there is no slavery. Uh, you know, maybe in Dubai where they pay their workers very little, you know, the migrant workers, maybe not the workers that live there. Uh, specifically are from there but you know we don't have slavery now in the United States and the West a lot of people will say and I would argue that 
because of the same convenience that caused slavery, because free labor is just so damn convenient. Um, I think our capitalistic system has turned into something else that provides a labor that's not, that is not slavery as we knew it, the terrors of slavery, but it does have the effect of not giving every single person uh, their fair share of what they've worked for. The minimum wage is historically low uh, compared to inflation throughout American history and in many other countries. Uh, you know, many Western European countries don't have as big of a problem as we do here, but the minimum wage should be between 11 and 14, and it's still 750 in a lot of places. Um, at least it should be at least 950, um, you know, na nationwide, but it isn't. Um, because when you are in charge of a corporation, when, if you're on the board or whether you're a CEO, and you have the option, because our current laws allow you to have the option of just paying somebody a very small minimum wage that does not meet the standard of living. I mean, not the standard of living, but the standard of, of just providing yourself with uh, nourishment, food for yourself and your family and life. You working a 40 hour week cannot give you everything you need for yourself and your family because it has not risen with inflation. And if you have the money, you can pay lobbyists to influence lawmakers to make sure that minimum wage stays down. So have we completely learned our lesson? Have we truly accepted that every single human being is just as valuable as every other? Or are we still fooling ourselves at least a little bit? Now, I'm no, I'm no, you know, extreme capitalist or, or communist or even on the fringes of these two things. I'm very much in between, but I believe first and foremost in fairness. And I think that in fairness, a human being should be able to work a 40 hour week and still provide for themselves and their family, their children, uh, everything that they need. And so of course the government is spending quite a bit on Medicare and, uh, f and you know, food stamps and things like that. Then, but a lot of it wouldn't be as necessary if we just had a higher minimum wage. So has, has slavery completely been abolished or has it just changed form in a better way? But still a way that is not a fair shake for our common man. Now, what holds the reins of, you know, of government, of our economy of convenience, is really, you know, the people in charge, like I said. But also, this is how they keep power, a lack of knowledge, a lack of freedom of knowledge. Now, we can look up anything online in the United States, but when I say freedom of knowledge, I mean that even media stations are not in the pockets of the few. There should be, there should be a, a limit on how much of a company you can own when it comes to media. It should be owned by the people. Now you can still choose which, you can still choose which to watch or which to support, but I feel like it would be far easier for us as human beings to move forward if information wasn't controlled by just a few people, by just the people with the most money who own the news stations, who are all, you know, claiming to be non -par, you know, unbiased. But we have found that to be not the case. In so many instances, whether it be so-called liberal or conservative, it doesn't matter. We have found that to be not the case, time and time again. And, you know, you can disagree with me and say, okay, this news station is better than the, another one, and uh, I get better facts from this news station over another. But we still don't own, we still don't really own the press. We still don't have a fair and equal press. Now the people that have been tortured and are dying behind me, these people just wanted to stop being tortured. They just wanted to at least have a chance to be equal. We owe it to every single person who has died in history because of either an unfair com uh, economy or an unfair social situation to continue the work necessary to move forward as a society. For if we do not, and we stop, it's only a little bit longer before that boulder comes rolling back down the hill and crushes us in the future. We have to keep on pushing that boulder until, I mean, I don't know until what, um, but human progress must move forward. It never stops. I can't predict what humanity will become, 
What I can say is that we owe it to everyone in the past to keep moving forward, to reach a better state of not forced equality, but true democracy. A true democracy economically. Maybe not an absolute, but a true democracy economically, politically, definitely when it comes to military. And the first step towards that is really holding our media accountable and encouraging it to be far freer than it is, far more accessible to the public. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see all of you on my channel. I hope to see all of you find yourselves, really, and understand these things more than I hope to see you on my channel. But I hope to see all of you on my channel in the future.